<laughs> you can edit that out, right? He won't, he won't be here next episode. Hey there, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the True Discussion Podcast. It's the only podcast in the world where you can discuss anything with anyone. And we're going to know if it's true or not. Why? Because we're going to just go by Chris Douglas's opinion. Tell me why. Because we're going to stand on that sweet word of God, man. We are still your host. My name is Joseph <laughs> Dobbs. I don't know if the mic picked that up. Or that not. is fantastic. And, and of, my name and is, of course, <laughs> Christopher. Bring it in. Single stripe, Douglas. Single stripe, bro. I got my first stripe. What? Yeah, boy. What does that feel like? And what do you have to do, dude? I was super excited. Uh, I got beat up a lot. Okay, so I'm not. I'm not. I'm not being. I'm not. I'm really asking a genuine question. I don't know anything about jujitsu. Yeah, I is can it tell. just? <laughs> t- <laughs> I'm teasing. Well, I clearly don't. I clearly don't. I'm teasing. All right. Okay. Okay. What does that mean? Was is that based on? I have no idea. Chris, you did this many hours, or you can do this many. I don't. What's it based? Is it a judgment uh, call? Your yeah, instructor it seems just says like there's. It's, if I'm being honest, I don't know that I understand fully. Right? Like it's not like hey, you have to do you know ABC proficiently over a period of time, and you get it. I don't think it's like that. It's interesting. So okay. I think that there's some liberty. And, and uh, last week on our episode, well, actually, shoot. No, it had been a couple weeks ago. Gosh darn it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm all mixed up here, man. Uh, hey, isn't uh, it hard? Like, some keeping time track ago, of episodes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, we had Anthony DeVidio on. Yeah. And at the end of the podcast, yeah. or nearing the end, we did talk about, like, sort of promotion and, and things of that nature. Some And some gyms are slow to do that mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. they want – and like he, had, he was saying, like, some of it is sort of sandbagging a little bit for the school. And it makes school look good, you know, sure, for these kids sure. to go – or these people to go in and, and kick some butt – because uh, they should be able to. Because they should be able to, because they're going against people that are are less equipped right, or, right. or really shouldn't be at the same level. That's interesting, rank. man. So, okay. Yeah. But regardless, got your first stripe. Yeah, man. That's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I feel I feel like it was. Um and, and of course I feel like Anthony does a really good job. Like when you when you do that, uh, he's super kind, man. And I feel like that's the thing. Is he? It is always. It's never. It seems like it's never like a frivolous thing. It's never like it's mm-hmm. something that has, that you can tell he's put thought into and and, um. You know, of course, he says things, but it, it, it's almost like he gives merit to why not not in a like a justification sort mm-hmm. of way, but just in a way of like, hey man, this guy or this gal is, this is what they've done. Man, and this is and so it is really cool. So. Um, yeah, man. So I, I guess in a sense, yeah, I'm proud of it, man. And it's one of those things too, where that's I feel tra- like I earned it. That's why you were trying to fight me when we were, before we pressed record. You yeah, kept absolutely, coming dude. I was, I was like, you know, come at me, bro. Well, not with a knife. <laughs> no. Yeah. Put it down. What? You told me to come at you with a knife and you're like, I can. No, I defend my I did not say that. <laughs> I watched some funny, like it was the <laughs> dumbest, uh, it was one, it, I don't think it was like a TikTok, but it was like a dumb, like. It was like a something about like what we practice and then reality or something oh, yeah, like yeah. that. And it was like, dude, he like gets in like a he gets this other guy in a street fight situation in a I think it's like a triangle choke or okay. something. And the guy like pulls a knife out of his oh, back no. pocket, you know. And <laughs> I mean, it was a joke. Yeah, it was like yeah. a funny, but it kind of makes sense. Yeah, right? like, I didn't practice that. <laughs> uh, good grief, man! So, yeah. uh, I got some good news actually about Anthony. Um, I, and I don't know if I can say it on. Well, I, I don't know. So someone, uh, how about this? What's he do for a job right now? What's he's his? an electrician. He is he right. Works, he's either an electrician or works for an electrician. I'm yeah, not yeah. Entirely sure. So I know he works for an electrician, but I, I. So I assume he's doing all of the duties that an electrician would <laughs> he's do. He's doing the do the electrical duties. duties. Well, let me just say this, and maybe we'll have an update for next episode. Heck yeah! But someone called me. Asking about him, mm. and they have a they would like to they have a job for him. Oh. And if I and they asked me if I could tell how Anthony if he would fit, and I was like, he would be this is right up his alley, yeah. And so that's all hey, that's all I can say. Hopefully, uh, they get a hold of him and he has an answer. And if it's good news, I would like to share it because, yeah, heck yeah, I the opportunity was like, that's pretty cool, very cool. So we'll see, we'll go, hey, hey, um, all right, man, let's get into it, Chris. How you been? It feels like it's been forever since it's just 
you and I, right? Yeah, because it's been, lately we yeah we yeah like so which had, has been had awesome. Had guests. Yeah. Oh gosh. Ah, so exciting, dude. Yeah. Hey, one of them last I think on one of the last episodes we were like, hey, you know, what do we can we put this out there? Can we put can we put it out there? Yes. Yeah. The it's, guest? Ofi- it's official, man. Dude, we got our first. Now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this. I did feel bad. Wait a minute. Editing, <laughs> editing um, the episode with we had we had Anthony on, right? Mm-hmm. And super killer guest, man. Really enjoyed our, our discussion with him. Yeah, and and a, a good dude. Uh, at the end of it, I don't know if you caught this, but at the end of it, um, I said that on on the episode. I was like, yeah, we got our first dream guest, and it's like I have a guest right here, and yeah. I said that. That's probably pretty rude. Yeah, he did say afterwards that, that he was gonna when you my come <laughs> yeah, to jiu-jitsu, that he was going to make you pay for that. If he uh, takes you know. us up on the free uh, coming in, <laughs> I'm going to roll that guy. Uh, I'm teasing. No, he but what that. Chris and I meant by that was the our first, and, and this is our opinion, first like big fish guest well, that we thought we could try and to get. <clears throat> sure. I, okay. This is the deal though, right? It's like we, we it do down, this Chris. and we enjoy engaging one another. We enjoy yeah. engaging all, you know, a ton of the content. And I feel like we're growing in this, in this ministry, right? Yeah, and, dude. And making it our own. <clears throat> and I feel like it is a joy. And we, and I feel like we have gone through a season, or at least I went through a season uh, this last winter where it's like, man, I, it, seem, it feels like I know, I a know. chore, you know what I mean, in some ways. And I'm and not that oh, we push through and, and here we are. I don't mean it like that. I'm saying that everything is going to have a season. And it's not that this is a season as much as this is a joy to see this growth. And so when we started this thing, it's like, oh, man, you know, how cool would it be to get so-and-so on? Or what What would that look right, like? Or, right, right. You know what I mean? And there's still people that were like, we talk about that now. Like, man, I would love to have this conversation with yeah, this guy yeah. and just pick his brain. And the thing is, is that it's no different than like we were kind of talking before. It's like, hey, like having a phone call. Yeah. With someone, it's it really is no different. And the beauty is, is that we get to format it just how we want. Yep. In that, hey, let's have a conversation. I mean, most of the interviews that we've done, some have been pointed topically, right? Yes. Like, hey, we want to engage this individual on a specific thing. Some, a lot of them, I would say, even the majority have been really just very candid. Mm-hmm. And so, obviously, we're honing those skills. So when we say, yeah, a dream guest is, it's one of those situations where. Hey, what if someday we could? And this individual. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, well, yeah. So, so I just want to. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna repeat what Chris is saying, man. For all of you who who don't have a podcast, you have a meeting with your friend, like Chris and I had, and we're like, let's do this. Okay, what's it gonna be about? I don't know. And it's one of the first conversations I remember, or it, it might have been you that was like, hey, can we get this guy on? And it's like, yeah, right, someday, maybe, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, we're getting him on. Yeah. Okay. Who is it? Tell him. So, <laughs> no, tell him no, I want to, actually, let's talk Joseph, about something. Tell him. No, let's move on. Tell him, Joseph. Okay, so we're scheduled to record. We're going to record an episode May 3rd, so next Monday, our typical recording days. Some Monday. May 3rd? Oh, May 3rd's a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let it this out so no it one doesn't reali- matter. No one realizes I'm an idiot. Yeah, we missed- nobody cares. So you missed the interview hey, we, with your you big don't even fish. Need to- hey, listen here. You don't even know, need to know when we record. Um, pass f- uh, Check, yeah. yeah, press forward 15 seconds yeah, on your you podcast go. app right now. Okay, good. Here you go. You're at the good part now. Right. Um, so we have a we have an episode coming up. Chris and I. So here's the thing, man. Why it's not like a big fish guest? One because he is obviously bigger in He's us a in a channel. He is a doctor. Um, Christian, super smart, mm-hmm. right? So that's intimidating because it's like, how how am I going to have a, a drink with this guy? And then if I can be honest, I'm not going to lie to the, the listeners. I agree and love his the work he's doing. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. also helps. And so I want to pick his brain. Okay, enough chit-chat. Let's press on to the next topic. No, I'm just kidding. We are going to have Leighton Flowers on from Soteriology. Doctor. Doctor. Leighton Flowers on from which you've heard, you've heard his name. If you followed us, you've heard his name. We yes, have referenced yes. him on many occasions. Yeah, fifty times every episode, nope. right? Because that's a minute. Nope. Okay, never mind. Um, from Soteriology One Hundred and One, I believe he is down at some uh, Baptist church in Texas. He is mm-hmm. in Texas, I think. Yes, Texas mm-hmm. boy. So, look, man, I, I'm 
I'm giddy about this one because uh, if, if we're being honest, that one is going to be topical. It is a, for a reason to have yeah. him on. Mm -hmm. Although I, I can see it going in a lot of directions just because we like well, sure. the guy. Yeah. So what Leighton specializes in <clears throat> is he was a Calvinist himself and in his words, a, a pretty hardcore Calvinist. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's not anymore. And because he is not, he, he wanted to be biblical and he wanted to start a ministry and he found out that what his beliefs were now, mind you, it's not his beliefs. They are uh, rooted biblical. in scripture. Right. They're biblical. Yeah. Um, he found out there's not a term for, for what his view, like what encompasses because he's not, his because view. Because when you think of Calvinism, you think what's the opposition to that right, Armenianism. Right. And he has just as many yeah. uh, objections, has objections to, to that. Armenianism. As you should. As, right, as he does Calvinism. Right. And so I, I obviously I feel like he does spend more time on the Calvinist content yes per se um but nonetheless like yeah. just is a very brilliant guy and has just some really fantastic arguments um you know and we we brought him up on the eli ayala interview and eli just said you know he's been on his podcast and mm -hmm. he just disagrees with him yep. now um that we're not trying to stir <clears throat> that pot at all but we're just what we're going to also do is have Eli come back on. And mm -hmm. what we're going to do is have both of these guys present. And it's, again, it's not in a, and they're going to be separate podcasts. Yeah. It's not a debate. It's right, separate it's a, episodes. So we're not setting up a debate. That's yep. not what we're trying to do. But what we're trying to do is just be able to present, present yeah. your side mm -hmm. in a sense of, Hey, make your own decision. And yeah. so uh, the hope that we have uh, for you, the listener, is is to be able to do these episodes back to back. Uh, yes. That way, again, you can listen to the content and you could just and again I decide. I don't know that you need to necessarily decide, yeah. but again, here have an informed view or understanding uh, presentation of these particular uh, yeah. sides or understandings. Biblical and, philosophical views, I sure. think, is the way like Leighton calls it, right? Because it's sure. not. These aren't um, salv salvific issues, right? Right. Mm -hmm. This is secondary, f fun, fun right. stuff. Yes, I absolutely. love talking about yeah. Scripture and what are the conclusions we can come from it. So if you're on board with that, it has nothing to do with your salvation or it's not a ta – I don't want to say that. You don't have to be in one of these camps to be saved. That's what right. I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah. And, it, and again, it's not – I don't feel like it's so nerdy and lofty. I feel like it's fun in this sense yeah. that, you know – just it's, like iron sharpens iron, so man, so one man sharpens another yes. means they have to make contact. That means that there is some teasing out. That means yep. that, you know, we bust the onions of the the reformed camp or the or the doctrines yeah. of grace. We do. We do. But it's not in a malicious sense. We're not anti-Calvinist. It is right. we're just not Calvinist. And and so it's sort of teasing out some of those differences is edifying. Is edifying to me, is edifying to listener, because Okay, manage this tension. Because the thing is, is that I can't sit here and say that I don't have tensions to manage, that I have it all figured out because I don't. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, you know, so next, uh, well, I think it may be the week before this one. Uh, who knows? Some time ago, we, we, <laughs> we interviewed uh, R.L. Solberg, okay? Yes, yeah. and Which was a fantastic interview, as, as you know, because you've heard it. And if you haven't, go back and listen go to it. Go back and listen to it. What are you doing? <laughs> and we talked about the Hebrew roots. Yep. Okay. Again, it just, is it a matter of salvation? Well, we get into that. Mm -hmm. We talked about it. And, and, well, shoot, it could be at some point. Right, right, right. But it is one of those things where it's edifying because you you grow in your understanding of the word mm -hmm. because you have to get into the word to have an understanding of what is going on in terms of that topic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, therefore, you are edified. You are more rooted in your understanding. Yeah. So, these are all good topics. Gosh, I love, I'm excited, man. Yeah. Uh, I would press to the, the listener, too, man. If in these episodes, now, I'm not saying the terms. If you've never heard the terms, that's fine. But if you've never thought of these philosophical conclusions, I would kind of press and go, you're just not reading the Bible then. Because you read the Bible, and you have to walk away going, wow, that verse seems like this or wow that verse seems like it's saying mm -hmm. this what do i do with it you should wrestle sure especially if you're reading cover to cover the whole bible mm -hmm. you should be wrestling yeah and so it's fun to go all right well what are these systematics that, that that man has developed sure so that we can better understand scripture um anyhow that being said just so you know chris and i are not anti-calvin anti-calvinism we're just not 
Calvinists. Yeah. And so it's easy for us to poke fun at that. If I'm being honest, man, I do feel like the episode with Eli coming on, because um, he'll, as a Calvinist, <laughs> he'll have his Calvinistic episode. Mm-hmm. I do think I'll walk away from that having a better understanding of Calvinism. Oh, absolutely. But I also think I still won't be Calvinist. Sure. <laughs> I just, and, and that's okay. Yeah, and, and you that's know fine. what? The, at the end of the day, uh, that relationship <clears throat> is going to grow. I have to believe, man. Because yeah, yeah. Eli's a cool guy. And it's yeah. super knowledgeable. And and I'm sure, again, we've had him on before, and you have heard the episode. If you have not, go listen to no, it. Listen Come to on. What what's your doing? problem? But anyhow, Leighton Flyers, and, and, and like I so said, we're going to try to release them back to back so you get both perspectives. We're not trying to pit one against the other. Uh, in fact, we're going to try not to do that, not to bring up the yeah, other yeah. person in each episode. This is a free, it's an open discussion on yeah. a certain topic yeah. with a certain guest. So pretty exciting oh, stuff. Oh, that, man. And today, so we, I, uh, we did get some I news know, today gosh, about dude. another guest that we're super pumped about. And we obviously can't mention that quite yet because we need to work out the details. Yep. Um, but that's an, it's another one. But and it so, might again, accidentally be the second big fish right like oh, gosh <laughs> we kind of just man, i feel like this year <laughs> you know, stumbled to be honest, on it really has been really fantastic yeah, it's been awesome man. because we've had some great great guests yeah and I, my goodness man i i'm i'm so pumped to be a vessel right because it's the thing is is that we're getting to engage these people that are doing what god has called them to do and and they're being faithful in that i mean you think about the anthony the video Right, you think about Sean Stoddard. You think about Cliff Couch. You think about uh, uh, Ron. What was his last name? Uh, Sol Solberg. No, no, no. Yeah, the. Uh, oh, right. I'm thinking of Rob. Rob, is that right? R. L. Solberg. Yeah. No, I'm thinking. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> Kansas City. Uh, did you oh, Kansas City? Uh, yeah. I'm. Oh no, Darn I'm. It. Ron. Ron. Ron uh, Freeman. Gosh, wow. I'm so sorry. I'll I'm edit so sorry. this part out, too, so yeah. we don't sound Ooh, stupid. Copy. <laughs> hey, I'm okay. with, my, my I, again, brain I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to think back. Come on, now. Kyle Thompson. We've had, and, and again, I know I'm forgetting someone um, that, that has been on that we have just been so appreciative of their time. And, and that's in the last year. But, you know, Paul Health, we've <clears> had, <throat> gosh, I mean, Pastor Greg, we've had a ton of yeah, guests man. that have just been so um I mean, gracious to us, but it's been cool because to hear their story or yep. to be able to engage where yep. they're at and, and ultimately to glorify God. So it's awesome. And we could go on and on and on. I know. People didn't tune in to hear. Like, but I guess what Chris and I are saying, man, like uh, to piggyback of, of what you said, Chris, like it's it's cool to be a vessel. Yeah. Like, dude, two knuckleheads yeah. have a show that like we're getting to talk to guys' ministries that we've been watching. Yes. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah. So if you guys want to talk to your like, not celebrity, but like teacher or whatever, get a podcast. Apparently they'll talk to anyone. All right, no, 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 I kid, but it's been good stuff, man. Let's get into some true discussion. Can we stop keep wasting time? What are we doing? I did ask, how are you doing? Oh, and you told everyone you got a white stripe, yeah, black stripe. You're doing so good, man. Black stripe. <laughs> It's a black stripe on my white belt. Sorry. And so now I have to call you Dr. Douglas. No, sir. Okay. So, Dr. Douglas, you I do. No, go- you can call me Single Stripe. Okay. okay. Single Stripe. So, I. That's actually a cool name. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> Christopher Single Stripe Douglas. Oh, um, I got one for you, man. Now, our internet is down. <sighs> so, because I wanted to play this video and I wasn't going to warn you what it was about. Do you want to airdrop it to me? So, I. Uh, well, I can't. I don't. I don't. I don't have internet, man. What about on your your smart? I don't uh, even know what it was called. I was gonna look it up and then play it on air. And I'm, your, your smartphone. No, don't worry. I'm gonna save this bit. Don't worry. Here we go. Right. We're gonna we're gonna shove it across the finish line. Okay. So okay. the video is, and maybe you've seen this guy. Probably not. Um, but he really is a progressive. I hopefully he's not a preacher somewhere, but he seems to act like a internet preacher where he has his videos of him interpreting scripture okay Mm. uh but his whole big shtick is that like scripture really accepts and we should accept uh the lgbtq and 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 Mm. just love them the way they are and accept them the way they are Mm. okay this video he uses the story of lazarus when christ call him to come forth is he a young guy? Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe I have seen it. Little scrawny little dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I believe the title of the video is Jesus Helped Lazarus Come Out. Yes, okay. I've seen it. All oh, right. my gosh. 
So, and I'm I'm sorry for the listeners. Maybe we could find that. I think that was on Red Pin Logic, right? Ter- yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I didn't watch the original. I watched that one. Yes. Okay. Um. So I guess if someone wanted to watch that turd of a video, we could put the link in ours. Although it's pretty horrible. Here's what the guy does. Obviously, you read a title like that, and you go, Re- like, really? You're trying to push that Jesus Christ helped a guy come out. And what, what does he mean by that, Chris, when he says he helped him come out? What does he obviously mean? What does he mean, or what does the Bible mean? What is, no, what's this guy what trying he to mean? mean? He means coming out of the closet right. as, like, openly... Pronouncing that I'm a homosexual and the right. world should accept it, right? That's what right. coming out is. And so he is going to push this argument that Jesus Christ helped Lazarus proclaim to the world that he's a homosexual and we should accept him. Mm. Helped him come out. If you don't want to slap this guy already, I feel I, like I don't know this would have been you. a good one to play, like to I play know. on. And the internet's down. What do you get off it. my case? Uh, okay, dissect it. Sorry. Unless you could find it on your phone real quick, and I could bump my gums while you find it. You do that. You think I can't talk? You think I can't improvise at the drop of a hat and talk about anything for what? One minute? Two minutes? I'm not. Mad. Do you think I couldn't do it for three minutes? I'm feeling Hold the up. Pressure. Do you I'm think mad. I could do it for four? I'm feeling the pressure, man. Hold on. Don't tell me you think I could do it for five minutes. Six? Six minutes. You're oh. out of your mind if you want me to do it. Seven. Seven minutes? All right, he's got the video. <laughs> Chris has the video. Um, why don't you just play it loudly? <clears throat> and I have the audio. I can sync it up. Let's go through this absolute piece of garbage video. Okay, do you want me to put it like in the mic or Yeah, just so we, okay. we can Sure, bro. Let's get it. <laughs> hey, we saved we're the bit. We're professionals. We saved the bit. All right. This is how you get the big big dream guests on by the way, is doing <laughs> stuff like this. Friend come out. In John chapter 11, verse 43, this is what it says. Jesus called out in a loud voice saying, "Lazarus, come out." You see Lazarus was locked up in a cold dark tomb, wrapped in burial cloths, left for dead. That's exactly what so many Christians and so many churches do. I, 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 I hate it so much. <laughs> um, he's already trying to twist it to metaphorically mean something right. by already stating, see, Lazarus was wrapped up and left for dead, just like society. No, he was, no, dead. He was literally dead. He was yes. literally dead. Yes. Okay, go on. Yeah. No, a good point. LGBT people. They wrap us up and bind us up and tell us that we need to keep our identity, our true self, locked away. But Jesus, upon seeing Lazarus in this state, he says, Lazarus, come out. Step into the light. Take off the cloth. Be who you are. Come alive. I believe that this is what... Be who you are. Come alive. Be... That's not what Jesus said. Because I don't see that in the text anywhere. And he says, Lazarus. (laughs) Did you hear him? Oh, no. He didn't Lazarus. say Lazarus. He so, said Lazarus. So does he not even read the Bible? So maybe he, yeah, maybe he's confused. Or maybe he's making this up, and so he's already twisted so much that it's no big deal. I, w- I wonder if it's one of those things where he, th- there's really um, your big hitter stories in Scripture. You just know from, like, when you're a kid. Right. And I wonder if that's in his head where he, know- he knows the story of Lazarus. Lazarus and he just he's making this message up because he has a memory of I I, I don't know because there's no way he read are. scripture That's, and came to that come on, man. okay okay oh, is there more Jesus is speaking to every LGBT person come out of the tomb of shame take off the chains that have bound you up step into the glory of who God made you to be fearfully and wonderfully made just as you are you are beloved of God this is a great are we like? Have you read scripture at all? I mean, I have. Do you think is, sometimes? That, okay, yeah. that okay. No, maybe he's on to something. That makes sense. When when Jesus was praying in the garden, I remember him praying, going, "God, like Father, why do I have to do this? You love everyone as they are. If this is pointless for me to go to the cross, right? I don't know. That, that's not what he said. Oh, yeah, actually, you're right. At all, you're right. So don't don't you don't take <coughs> notes from his exegetical no. approach. <laughs> Or uh, eisegetical. eisegetical <laughs> ho- like totally inserting the LGBTQ agenda into I this story. I honestly don't even know how he's making that leap. It is is very like allegorical and loose and and like good grief, man. I hate I hate because it's so 
in the way he's using it, it's so open to interpretation. I mean, if just real quick, you guys, um, John 11, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead, okay, he wasn't left for dead. This mm-hmm. wasn't a societal, like, it wasn't a metaphor. Society hadn't wrapped him up and shame told him, on you, Lazarus. stay in your tomb of shame, Lazzy. That's what they called him. He was dead. He's playing hide and seek. And how long has he had been dead at this point, wasn't it? Uh, I thought a few, it was few days. days. Yeah, or so something. he, like, I think they even say, like, whoa, whoa, whoa roll away the stone. He's going to stink. Mm-hmm. So this, this, is decompos- this fool's dead. Decomposition. Yeah. And he that was dead came forth. What? Bound, hand and foot with grave cloths, and his face was bound. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Mm. So nowhere in there is there a metaphor to say, yeah, it's just like when society casts away the LGBTQ. No, it's, it's, it's not just like that. Mm-hmm. This guy was physically, he, he was dead. Mm-hmm. There, there's no metaphor there. He was dead. Well, right, and I feel like, and I've heard arguments about like you, you, dead, like Lazarus, in terms of salvation, and and even that's a stretch, right? Uh, yeah, I, if right? I, Hey, hey, if I'm being honest, I would say uh, three or four years ago, because I did, I was dipping into Calvinism because mm-hmm. I was like, man, what is it? Mm-hmm. All the big guys I follow preach it and teach yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was on that side of the fence where I was like, oh yeah, that does make sense, Lazarus. Yeah, because he was dead. Christ called him. It, Lazarus didn't make a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, however, when you read the text, though, it, it's not about salvation. Right. Sure. The, yeah. Because you, you would have to tell me, why is Lazarus saved just because Christ told him to come forth? Christ didn't, hadn't gone to the cross yet. So why, right. it what is, happened? It is about Jesus Christ's authority. Yes. Right? Over life <laughs> and death. Come forth. Why? Because I said so. Right. Oh, golly. That's uh, awesome. That's awesome. For for me, that further points to Christ for salvation because I can go, man, if he's got the power over that, mm-hmm. yeah, you're a fool if you don't put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Now, I can say you're a fool if you don't, but the Calvinists would go, well, yeah, but he predetermined that you wouldn't anyway, so I don't know if they can call you foolish. Say that. I don't know. Okay. Anyhow, that's it. I thought you'd really... <laughs> what? Good stuff. Uh, okay. So are you okay. ready for... I got a little question Yeah, I hope you, you got one you way got? better than, no, than no, no. that garbage. I don't know. <clears throat> um, I, I was going to ask you this off air, actually, to to prime your pump, but let's get it. Let's freaking rock let's and roll, get it. man. Is church attendance important? Church um, important <laughs> to what? To, why is it important? Why is it important? Is it important? Yeah, you should be... Well, we're commanded... Okay. ...to gather, first of all. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I need the preaching and teaching of God's word. We all do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel like- the, I feel like you have to get to the point of, like, what, what is the point of church, yeah. right? Because To determine why is it good or, or not, That's right? what I was trying to ask. Why do you, are you asking this important? Yeah. Well, I think, I think that's fair. Well, because I'm sure, I'm sure we have listeners that, that maybe it's not important. Or maybe— They're wrong. Because you would make justification, mm-hmm. right? Well, that's interesting, Chris, because you make a good point. If church is not about getting together and here and first and having that fellowship, mm-hmm. obviously, yeah, and hearing God's words preached, then you could just say, "Well, yeah, it's just about getting together, or it's just about the worship music, or it's just about having a cool lunch at twelve o'clock." Okay, if all of those are the reasons, then yeah, I don't, it, I wouldn't say it's important. Those are all just really nice things. Sure. Sure. Well, okay. So, what about the 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 Christian that I is spoke. like? Well, look, I I fellowship with believers. You know, we mm-hmm. we go over and you know they come over to my house, I go over to their house, mm-hmm. we break bread. You know, we fellowship. That's so that's gr- good. That's great. Right? We talk about the things of God. Is that does that replace church? Hey, well, it doesn't replace church. It's a great thing though. Right. Yeah. It's a great yeah, yeah. thing. Right. Do you do to get together, break bread with your your brothers and sisters, and still keep talking about uh, Christ His mm-hmm. Word? <laughs> that's a great thing. I, now, that being said, I don't oh. think that <clears throat> salvation is based on church attendance. Nope. Okay. Thief on the cross. Right. Went to zero church <laughs> services. <laughs> that guy. That guy. I can't Dude, wait to meet he, that he's guy. The right? prototype, like he, he's the prototype for <laughs> so things, many so questions many things, yeah. about being yeah, a Christian. Sure, sure, sure. Or being saved, yeah. yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so what if 
Okay, well let's let's go to scripture. Okay, <laughs> the, the early church. So the, the early church question. it devoted okay. themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayer, which we've already talked about. Acts two forty two, um, and then I wanted to read Hebrews ten twenty three through twenty five, which says this: <clears throat> Let us hold fast. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and to good works, and not neglecting to neglecting to meet together mm-hmm. as some are in the habit of, but encouraging one another, and all the more as as you see the day drawing near. Good mm-hmm. grief. I, I don't know why I stink it. I feel like my brain is going so fast. But it's but the point of that is that as we see the day drawing near, right? And we see that in society. Now, again, they've been saying since this was written, yeah, that those yeah, are the end for days. Sure, so for sure. obviously we're a day closer every day we get. And so not to get in the habit of neglecting to meet together as right, some are in the habit, right. habit of doing. That's that's pretty pretty important. Yeah. Right? And yeah, it, man. Well, <clears throat> if I could it's <clears throat> the the timing of you asking that question is it, it's gotta be spiritual. <laughs> as my brother put something today. Um, because that's been heavy on my mind uh, since this morning I woke up. Mm-hmm. That, like church attendance. Because if I'm being right. honest, uh, Shay and I are like super lacking it. I should not have thrown my wife's name out there. It's me. I'm, I'm leading the household. Uh, super lacking in church attendance lately. Okay? And so uh, I, I know better. I think that's why it's eating at me. And I have this memory of a guy I know he always told me, like, growing up was like, because he doesn't go to church, and his excuse was like, well, yeah, I, I, I don't go to church. I have church when I open my Bible and I go out in, in a field. Right. Because he's a farmer. Mm-hmm. And as a kid, I remember I always was like, yeah, that, so- yeah, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. That makes sense, I guess. It sounds good. Sounds um, good. It's not true. Right. You're not having church. And here's why that's a concern. You could get tossed to and fro in doctrine, and you don't have anyone for correction. Mm-hmm. You don't have anyone to sharpen iron. Iron needs right. to sharpen iron. yeah. yeah. Um, you're just there, you yourself with scripture. And, and I know that sounds fine. All you need is scripture. Um, but, but scripture even tells us we need teachers. Yeah. We need instruction, right? If I'm going into scripture with my own, if I want to be eisegetical and I want to go in there with my own agenda, I could get way off track. Oh, absolutely. Man. And so that's just one tiny, one small example with a, a huge consequence is like, we should gather, man. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So uh, again, for <clears throat> for the teaching, for fellowship, for breaking bed, breaking bread and prayer, right? So that that those things are the reason. So community. Um, the other thing is that and I've already mentioned that if you know, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Mm-hmm. Just like you were saying. So keeping us uh, theologically sound doctrinally sound you know if if greg preaches something and i don't even have to disagree with it maybe i'm like hey what what did you mean by this or or expound upon that or, or whatever i called him asked him a question today yeah uh about something and it just so happened that he's studying this very topic and he's going to be preaching on it so it was, it was good stuff. but it's like man you know i'm curious about this and so that that's good stuff to be able to bounce off, and that is what sharpens. So yeah, like to your point, if if you go out in a field, am I saying that you can't worship God that way? No, I absolutely think you can worship God that right. way. <clears throat> However, the church has a specific purpose, right? And the and you know, uh, and I'm not gonna read it all because I I actually care for the listeners, uh, but you know. <laughs> First Corinthians uh, 12, uh, 14 through 20. Wait, wait what, what Corinthians? First Corinthians okay. 12, uh, 14 through 20. Because I'm in First Corinthians. I'm working my way through it lately these days. But what what he what is Paul is talking about, and I guess we could read it, or you could read it if you want. First Corinthians what? Uh, 14 through 20. 12, 14 through 20. Man, I'm all, how do you open a Bible? 12, 14 through 20? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> I... I can't find it in my Bible. For some reason, my, my bookmark's off, but I, I think I do have that one memorized. So I'm going to see, see what I got here. They, How does the this camera's go? on you. It, it start- can see you looking at your Bible. 
I mean, if you did it looking at the camera, I feel like that would be more believable. Yipe! All right. For the body <laughs> is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members yet, but one body. Okay. And the reason that this is important is because as a whole body, we all have a function, a it takes place. All. It takes the whole, like it takes the hand and the eye and the ear, all of it, all of your parts, man, to, to <laughs> make a body, to make it function properly, to move it in the direction. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a, as far as God is called and willed. So that is important. Right, mm -hmm. so you can't. So if you're not going to church, you're not engaging. You're not. You're not being a part of that edifying process. Right, and and you're you're neglecting the body. Yep. Well, and and so going back to like the individual who's like, well, I just read scripture on my own, and 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 that's church. Um, it's not. Uh, I read scripture on my own, I, and I love it. But then I immediately have a thousand questions every time mm -hmm. I open the Bible, and I, I just. It's nice that I can have someone with years ahead of me and oh, go, man. hey, what's what's up with this? Right? right? We need that. So, no, I, I, you're absolutely right, man. Not only you're right. <laughs> Scripture's right. Uh, it takes all types because the body is made up. Right. Of all, like, every little small individual. That makes up the entire body. And really, that's pretty cool, actually, man. Well, it should. And, and I guess, so a part of the other question is, like, if we are... Born again, if we have the Spirit of God residing in us, should we not honestly desire that fellowship? And and the yeah, like, the, I I love going to yes. church, dude. Yeah. I, I I do. And there's some days where, like Sunday, I had a late night Saturday. Um, we went to the concert over in Colby. Uh, man, I got to see Unspoken, Ben Fuller. Uh, I think it's Lauren Crawford and a comedian, mm. dude. It's, oh, it was great. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was it was very good, very good. Um, it was a fun time, dude. But I was, I, if I'm being honest, I was a little tired, and so I feel like I was struggling a little bit in the service. But I'm telling you, man, I wanted to be there, mm. and I, I enjoy that fellowship. I enjoy. I you know I've grown to not enjoy. I'm not gonna lie. I care about the listeners. I'm not gonna lie. I don't necessarily enjoy the like handshaking time. I'm I'm not a fan. You never have, and, and I just you've I don't always get it, man. you've always told me that it's yeah. just a you feel like it's a routine yeah thing I'm, that we just hey and, how you doing hey yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't like it. I can't wait to see you Sunday to be like get over here you big turd. Yeah, oh no, I'm, see, I'm 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 uh, I'm actually preaching Sunday, huh. so I won't yeah, be. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> That's good stuff, man. Well, hey, well, let me ask you something, Chris, because I don't know this about you, and I feel like I know you pretty well. I don't know when you read scripture. What well, when when is your time to get into the word? Too busy flexing to answer the question. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, for, it's usually yeah, first thing in the morning. Oh, it is. So when I get up, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I yeah, was yeah. just asking. Back yeah. off, dude. Well, no. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> That's that is how I like to. I mean that I like to start my day. Yeah, that way. and and I, the struggle is there are times where um, I it's just there have been times where it's a struggle. Yeah, yeah, a little fair, bit. But, fair enough. But for the most part, man, it's every single day. I feel like the big to be honest, the biggest struggle is usually on the weekends, man. To still like, do it in the morning. Yeah, because I okay. sleep in a little bit, and so then the kids are up. And then it's and the like, days oh, go. Gosh, man. Uh, when it's just difficult you. because I'm like, squirrel. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's like some, something going so on. Your and Biden I'm like, impression, like just coming to, <laughs> where am I? <laughs> Shaking hands with no, the I air. Mean, like, I, I'm like, I, I, it's got to be like quiet. Megan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Megan. Like, I need like a quiet corner. So, where's to concentrate. The, where's Mrs. Douglas? Um, so, there you have Anything else on the body of Christ? No, man, I just, for the listener, if, if that is a struggle for you, the first step is always the hardest. But I feel like the thing about it is, is that if you're waiting for motivation, right, which we talked about this several weeks yeah, ago at some yeah. point, was like, that's, that's 
motivation comes and goes. It's it's the discipline uh, to be there. there. Yep. And I feel like it is important. And so, because I, I'm sure I mean, we've gone to church long enough to know that there are those people that are very like hit or miss or or just not there consistently. And it's not... <clears throat> And again, you know, is it, is it a big deal? I, I don't know. Maybe they got life going on. But at the same time, there is a concern, man. Because you're not, if you're not making it important, like, what is, what is going on? What is, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I, I get, I get it. Maybe, maybe I don't. I, I feel like I struggle, man. I feel like I've never been one to not, like, I want to be there. Yeah. I want to be at church. So I, I don't know. Maybe I can't understand, but I guess I just wanted to be an encouragement to the listener that, yeah, it it is a command. There is a purpose for it. And I think a part of growing in your spiritual life is getting plugged in and engaged. And I understand that there are times where it's uncomfortable. It feels like, well, how and where, and I don't even know where I fit or how can I serve or whatever it might be. You've got to take that first step, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, for sure. And that that's... Again, so just trying to be an, uh, an encouragement. Yeah. I don't know if you're No, redundant. man, I like what you said, too, of, like, um, shouldn't it be a joy, like, if you're saved, to to want to go to hear God's words with your brothers and sisters? Yeah. Could be. I guess I say because there is the individual who goes, yeah, I'm saved, but, like, I, I hate church. I don't go. Mm-hmm. And you hear, right, it's full of hypocrites. Like, you hear all the stupidest reasons. And I, I'm sorry, but if you're a reason for going to church, and not going to church is the people. Yeah, you don't have the right reason there. I right. mean, we're not. That's not why we're going. Fellowship is a little extra on the cake for sure. Fellowship's awesome. What what, it, what do you say to the listener that is maybe uh, maybe they just haven't found the right church? What is that? I mean, is that a thing? <clears throat> I mean, have they looked? Maybe, Man, maybe, if, I mean, I guess. How would you answer that? Or what? If what I'm you, being honest, uh, it's oh, that's such a that's a. Brought, like that's a huge question because there's a lot to unpack there. I don't know the individual. When when they say that, I'd have to go. Well, what are you looking for? And if they just go, well, a church that isn't heretical, then I'd be like, well, I don't, I don't know if you've gone to any churches in Goodland then, because I feel like there's a handful that are not heretical. Yeah. <laughs> I I mean I I get what you're saying. I feel. Like, <laughs> gosh dang. Oh no. <laughs> no. I get it, but Chris is putting the all same, the good liturgies on blast. I'm so no, no, sorry. No, 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 no. I'm not. I I didn't mean on that. I'm saying for the person. I yeah. I'm thinking from that. Like go. How how yeah. do you know I, unless you go? Right. So my next my answer would be well you should you should be going then to find out. Right. You, yeah. You go, absolutely. Go, go. And and if and if the pra- <clears throat> pastor preaches something heretical, you can either address it or or find the answer door. Yeah, yeah. That's wrong. Nothing wrong with that. No big deal. But then if it, if everything's fine and it's just preference. Well, I haven't, we haven't found a church yet that we don't like the music. You're wasting everyone's time then. You should just be going. Go, mm-hmm. go. Find the right church. Find the right church. Yeah, like, yeah. that's a tough one, man. <laughs> okay. So in conclusion, man, the body's made up of, of all the parts, right? So, man, be a hand, be a foot. And if you don't know what you are, it's probably because you're a butt, so. <laughs> that was a good one. I liked it. <clears throat> I liked um, it very much. It's scripture, right? It's not mine. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Well, just Elon Musk has bought Twitter, buying Twitter. Something and like that. What's I, up with that? And bro? I guess the left is losing their mind. Why? Yeah. Why? It's a company. A rich person owns it. What? What is your? What's your objection to that? Their objection is because they've used it as a tool <clears throat> to silence and to govern and 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 manipulate and uh, censor. Those, those days are gone. Hopefully. Potentially, the way he Hopefully. speaks. I mean, yeah, he seems pretty open to free yeah. speech. And- wouldn't, wouldn't that be awesome? First African-American to <laughs> own a company th- of that magnitude? They should be celebrating, right? Isn't he hitting all the check marks of their yeah. agenda checklist? It drives me up the wall. All right, ma'am. I got one for you. So I, I have been in Corinthians. First Corinthians. Corinthians. Corinthians, huh? Okay, bud. This has what been another two discussion cup? podcast. What do you got in that cup over there, Mom? I, uh, I don't know any of the books of the Bible, what they're called. First Corinthians, you freaking wise guy. So let me run this one by you. Verse 5, out of the gate, man. Because I don't know how, how yours says it. Uh, that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all, all knowledge. Verse 5, is that what yours says? I'm sorry, what? Where? First Corinthians. I'm sorry. Chappy okay. 1. 
Okay. You don't so, have to flip there. I'm just trying to make a stupid point. No, I'm going to read it <clears throat> because I want to know what you're saying. Well, yours probably doesn't say it the way. Because yours is like in tongues, bro. <laughs> so the, the thing I want you to look at is verse 5, at least the way mine says it. So I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God, which is given to you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Good grief. That's you're talking about 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 5. Uh chapter 1. Verse 5. Verse 5, yes. Good golly. It seemed like a lot more words. Mine says that in every way you were enriched to him in all speech and in all okay. knowledge. Okay. So mine says in utterance, and I was just gonna I was just gonna bust you for a little bit. Yeah, utter utterance. That's under a so, cow, right? Huh? That's under a cow. <laughs> no so in utterance that's um that's speaking in tongues that's yeah what utterance, we... that's what utterances are right <clears throat> so he sh- jesus christ should be with us in all utterance and in all knowledge i don't know i don't i don't know man you're making me so uncomfortable right now it's are you not speaking in tongues <clears throat> it's not by the way no it's not speaking. does someone in tongues. use that as a proof text or what well no they use u- utterance as speaking in gibberish tongues for some reason, the word utterance means gibberish. It doesn't. The word translated there for utterance, when they're talking about it in Acts, it means, this is really cool, <clears throat> it doesn't just mean gibberish, and it doesn't even mean speaking just like as a broad statement. It means speaking big things in a very clear, like, stating way. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. That's an utterance. That's the word that they're using there for utterance. Should we ha- I, <clears throat> I feel like we need, this is something that we've, Okay, what are, sorry. No, I was going to say, what two types of people should we have on? Like a back-to-back episode. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, someone's very, extremely charismatic. Very charismatic. Yeah. And then a cessationist. Yeah. I would really enjoy that. Brothers and sisters, comment. Let us know if we should get a charismatic continuist, mm-hmm. meaning they believe that they still have the offices of uh, prophesying, uh, instant healing. Uh, what would be another one? The, well, the sign Oh, speaking gives. in tongues. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. sign gives. Um, oh, and... Uh, should we have another episode with a cessationist, someone who is, <clears throat> uh, you know, believes that those I feel big... like that makes me want to squirm, dude. I'm, I'm going to be honest. That makes Why? me want to squirm. Why? Which one? Both or? No, the charismatic. <clears throat> like, I just, it makes me want to squirm because I feel like. I, I would and love again, to talk to It one. would be, yeah. I, yeah. Because it wouldn't be a debate. I'm not here to convince <clears throat> or be persuaded. I want to ge- genuinely, genuinely. Take me through. Why do you believe these officers? Well, they're going to use the scripture, but don't you think they're going to? It's got to be twisted, right? I want to. I want to have that conversation, man. It'd be fun. Okay. Um, because I just watched a video today. I was going to ask you about this. There are people today who still, you know, um, claim to have the gift of healing, right? Of instant healing and prophesying and speaking in tongues, and they walk around and preach in the open sh- open air preaching in sock sack cloths. And ashes. Okay. Did you know that? No. I didn't know that either. Dude, what if we had a charismatic on? Okay. It'd be great. And right. And and the char- he starts making you levitate. <clears throat> what would you do? I would that seems demonic. That's not a, a, a sign in a like I don't know, dude. But he makes me levitate and he's on Zoom and he's doing no, it. No, no, no. He computer. maybe we have him here. Do we have a I don't know a charismatic in town? Maybe wow, I bet hey, we do. So there you go, brothers and sisters. If you know of a charismatic yeah, uh, that, could, that could physically come in and sit in the studio, that'd be dope. If not, we'll have to find one online and, and Zoom. And make Joseph levitate. <laughs> and see if we can get me to levitate. Okay. All that's a joke, man. Uh, or, or my thing I was making. I do want to talk about, though, Paul. Gosh, I love. Dude, if I don't, I don't, I don't. Is, I don't know. Is wine going to be in heaven? If you say yes, then I have to go, is, is beer going to be in heaven? Because <laughs> this is the only reason why I'm asking is because I want to have a beer with Paul, okay? Because I love Paul. The way he speaks is so direct, and he, has, he doesn't have a second to waste. Right. He is so to the point. Mm-hmm. Paul's my guy, man. Okay. So working my way through Corinthians. Um, now, this is Paul speaking, right? Paul was a man. <laughs> Paul was a, Yeah. There was no questions. No, man. He yeah. didn't take slack. It yeah. was very direct. And if you had a problem, it was your problem. He's not ha- not swaying. Have you heard uh I think I heard it on like uh John Cooper. He 
there's some pastor and he's like, I heard the dumbest thing I've ever heard or something along those lines. But it was that this guy was saying that if Jesus were alive today, he would be like a groomer and a, did you hear that? Yeah, I did. I think it was on TikTok. Yeah. Some silly What in the world. So Paul would not be that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to derail you. No, Continue. you're right. But there was a guy on CNN. They had like their panel. And Good he said grief. that like if Jesus Christ were alive today, he'd be like, dude, shut your mouth. Ma- you know what? One thing I cannot stand is when non-believer, God hater, like they're God, like they're open. They mock Christianity. Then they try to use Christianity as their platform. Mm-hmm. Like, well, the Bible says, Sh- dude, shut up. Yeah. Shut up. I, like, I yeah. It's wild that we even entertain that conversation with that well, person. Well, because there's people that would take that as the gospel truth <clears throat> now. Yeah. And well, he's smart. Terrible. So he, yeah, he probably. Oh, knows. you justify my thinking. <laughs> All right. I'm so, sorry, man. So, Paul, man, right into the Corinths, and he's, he's ri- like, I love him because he always opens up with, like, man, love you guys. Peace. It's me, Paul. How y'all doing? But then it's like, let's get to, let's get to business. All right. We ain't, we ain't diddly daddling here. <clears throat> it's official uh, scripture term. So where are we going? I'm still in, in chap, chappy one. Um, but when he's talking about like, hey, y'all are like putting way too much on this whole baptism thing. And I like when he says he's like, I'm glad I didn't baptize you because then you'd be bragging about how you got baptized mm. by Paul. And it's verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And I love that. Not with the wisdom of words. Let's, at least the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Mm. One of my favorite ones, because he is saying that, like, look, dude, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I didn't come for all this fancy hoopla. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even come to make good sounding arguments that's, you know, fancy words. I came to right. preach this because I don't want the cross to be watered down at all. Mm-hmm. Don't you even dare Amen. try to make that of none effect. <clears throat> then he makes this case for why. Like, dude, the cross is pretty dope. Verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto which are saved it is the power of God. Here's his statement, or sort of a, a first premise, an opening premise. He says, I'm not going to worry about the sound of finding argument. I came to preach Christ crucified. Mm-hmm. Believe that. And he goes, I don't want to water it down because I don't want to make that of none effect. And then he goes on, why don't I water it down? Because it's already foolishness to the world. Right. It's already foolishness. Mm-hmm. Why should I water it down losing the power of God? Why would I do that? It's already foolishness to the world. Well, look at, I mean, the, the mainstream American church, right? Oh, man. Because it, it, it's so built on this seeker-friendly stuff that they water it down. They compromise. They, they twist yeah. and turn it. I mean, we played a video earlier La- of a Jesus guy. Jesus helped yeah. Lazarus come out? Are you what? St- like What? Yeah, talk about, well, that's more than watered down, man. That's like, that's been replaced. Blatant twisting of right. the scripture, right? Sure. And shoving in agendas that's mm-hmm. n- nowhere near to be found. Right. Like, what are, you, what are we talking about? Um, and then he goes on, good, good stuff. Uh, verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. I, so I love that, by the way. So he makes this premise of like, look, I'm not going to water it down anyhow, and I'm not going to make it some fine-sounding argument because it's already foolishness to the world. But then he ends, he wraps it up by going, and guess what? The foolishness of men, the wisdom is found in in God. Mm -hmm. So God is able to, like, it's foolishness to us. But there's still wisdom found in him. And the weakness of God is is stronger than men. So even, like, our, dude, we're weak, we're foolish. (laughs) But God, right? Right. But God. Okay, moving on. Um, Again, I just, I love... I think I had a question here, Chris, and I was going to pose it to you and see what you say. Chapter two. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellency of speech or with wisdom, declaring uh, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Okay, again, he's repeating. I didn't come here to to, to know anything other than Christ crucified. That's what y'all need to know. You don't need to know these stupid arguments or, or big fancy words. You need to know Christ crucified. Uh, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So here's what's cool, man, <clears throat> and here's what I was going to pose to you. 
Now, I we had an apologetics episode, presuppositionalism. I love presuppositionalism. It's the method I would use. It's the method I I just have grown to love. It's biblical, and it's it's uh, it's an airtight argument. However, I read that and I kind of struggled because. Is Paul not saying, like, I did not come with enticing words of man's wisdom? Mm -hmm. So anything a man thought of, that's not what I'm coming at you with. I came with the demonstration of spirit and power, of the spirit and of its power, so that your faith is, will not stand in the wisdom of men, but in God. Is he not saying, look, if I did, if, man, it would be awful if I did win you over with fancy arguments and wisdom of men, because if I did, then your faith would be in that. Well, I, I think a part of the context is the church in Corinth and the things that Fair. they're wrapped up in Fair. and and the way that they were. I mean, he wasn't saying, you know, back in chapter one, hey, I'm glad I didn't baptize you because I, I hate baptism. Right. He, he, there was a context there. Right, because he understood the heart of the church. I didn't want you to be bragging about that, making making a big deal about that when that's not the point. Not that baptism is, right. is wrong. Not that right. baptism is wrong. You know what I'm saying? So there's a there's a context here. So I I wouldn't. I don't think that he is saying, "Hey, to have a philosophical argument is wrong." Okay. He is just simply saying that that's not what I'm doing here. Right. Because that's not what you need. Right. No, I agree. I, I, man, that was right, because easy. Because we, we know that, that would last in, Because in Acts, right? But the Hill of Ares, <clears throat> or the Aragapis in Acts there, where he goes to and he does debate, and that's where... Oh, for... Okay. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> where they... That's where a lot of these philosophical arguments are made. Yep, they're already and on the rise, and yeah. And, and again, he did... Even then, though, he didn't make this fine-sounding argument. He was very to the point. <clears throat> but at the same time... That's where that intellectual debate was happening. Right. 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 Um, and, and he engaged there. But again, he didn't, it wasn't with fine sounding argument. It was just very much to the point mm -hmm. of, of the truth of the gospel. Yeah. And I think that there is wisdom in that. And, and for what he's saying, like, I'm not going to water it down because the world already thinks it's foolishness. I'm going to speak very open, very plain, very, this is foolish. Right. I don't have a problem with that. And that's, Dang. you know, to your point, you know, I think that is presuppositional. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and yeah, that's where I was going. So I, I guess I, what I'm saying is I had a, I had a thought and I was like, man, I bet you, I, I'm going to trip up Chris with this. Well, that didn't work. I thought we we're going to have 15 minutes of gold. No, you're right, man. So I, I guess I don't want someone to read that verse and think, oh gosh, so I, sh I shouldn't reason or talk or have any sort of conversation with the non-believer because he's saying right here, don't use words. Uh, like if they're fools already. No, what he's saying is I am gonna I am gonna give you the truth. I am gonna reason. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you the things not based in the in the wisdom of man, but based in the wisdom of God. Sure. I mean, again, I think that there's a context, right? And and so if you're if you're having a conversation with an individual that is less concerned about understanding truth and wants to win an argument, why? <laughs> Why would you engage on on all of those things? Right, right. If you're, but if you're engaged with someone that that does want to understand truth, maybe maybe we can have those 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 conversations yeah. about the philosophical things that ultimately do come back to God because He's the Creator of all things, you know. So I think that there's a context. Yeah, fair Is enough. That fair? Yeah, and, and I guess we do have to remember that too. He's not. This is literally a letter to the church, so right. it's not. He's right now. He is not talking to non-believers. He's saying to you guys, "Hey, look, mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't, I'm not coming to you as a believer right. with with wisdom from man. That'd be silly. Right? That'd be silly right now. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Shoot, <laughs> that was an easy one then. Well, all right, man. Of course. Well, and then uh, just to wrap up chapter two, we and we've talked about this. I think it was last year um, that. The foolish man can't discern spiritual things, and um, it's really silly to claim to. We need Scripture to do that. Mm -hmm. And he ends up chapter 2 by saying we have the mind of Christ in that. I mean, that's good, good stuff. stuff, man. Yeah. To know, and so I guess it sort of wraps up his whole premise of like, I don't come to you with wisdom and men, all right? Because mm -hmm. here, here's what that doesn't have. Right. It, won't, it won't have spiritual discernment. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> we have the mind of Christ to do that. Man. Ooh, so baby. Good. 
Paul, chill out, bud. What more hope could you have? What more hope could you have? All right, man. So, uh, is that so? Are we wrapping? That's all I got okay. for you. Cool. No, I, I like it. It's good. Hey, listen. If you like what we're doing, a true discussion, leave us a rating on your favorite listening platform. Please. Okay? It it really does help. Um, we like to engage you on the social media platforms. We're on Instagram, uh, Twitter. Facebook are the main three. We we have some stuff on Rumble. I don't know that. Who cares about that? We don't care about that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> leave us a rating, though. And we love your comments and engagement. If if there's a topic that you want us to engage, man, please send it us send it our way. Absolutely, we're not we're not afraid to talk about anything. As you if you have listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you know that we have talked about a variety of things, mm-hmm. and we get to do that because it's our show and we can, but also because we are looking at it through the lens of a biblical worldview. And that is what we're trying to help you develop is that lens. And so that that's our aim and our hope. Ultimately, we want to bring God glory yeah. through all of the things that we do. And that's all the things that we talk about. That's the guests that we have on. Everything that we do, we want to glorify God. We want to help equip the saints, which is you if you're listening, hopefully. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> because, we, because we care about what we're doing and, and we want the will of God to be worked out, right? Mm-hmm. And so this is we're just vessels. We're trying to be obedient in that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that we, we've we mentioned it from time to time, but if you have any desire for us or one of us, um, the better looking one or... or <laughs> I'm teasing. Um, to, to come and speak at your church, yep. uh, at an event, whatever it is, we are totally open to that. If yep. you want us to come and be a guest on your podcast, we're open to that as well. So um, please reach out. Uh, you can find us at truediscussionmedia.org, or you can find us on the listening or the Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and message us there as well. So absolutely, man. I and this is old uh, now at this point, so forgive me for the person who asked. Um, <clears throat> but when we do do when we did do the precept episode, I was told to throw this out there, brothers and sisters. If you listen to the episode and you had any questions that you were like, "What was that term?" or "I need." To go into this further, uh, hit us up. Yeah, please dive dive into it with us. We'll, we'd be happy to answer. We can answer on the spot with you, or we could dive into it on the episode. Um, the question that was posed to me was like, "Whoa, Calvinism! This is the first time I've ever heard of that. Is is that salvational? Do I need to mm-hmm. know and believe that?" And and, sure. and I didn't want the person to be worried, and I I sort of don't want you to be worried listening now. Anyone that thinks that, um, because the answer is no, no, right, yeah. It it's it's just, how do you describe it? Over it's, it's an understanding of the processes of it. Salvation, yes, yeah, right. So that's soteriology. <clears throat> yeah. So soteriology one hundred and one, the process of, of salvation. Yeah. You know what? So it's the process. How is man saved? Yeah. So the you know the Calvinism or at least the the doctrines of grace tulip. Mm-hmm. Uh, is is that it is understanding how is man saved? Yeah, that's what it is. That's all it is. So it's not it's not these are the criteria. It's not that. No, it's simply man's understanding as systematic as you've pointed out of how that what it looks like, yeah. how it is. You know. Uh, so yeah, to your point, and and also I, I would also like to plug Eli on that. If if you have questions too, uh, he's a great one to reach out to. Yeah, you should and hit him up. And <laughs> also, I think he does like an online course yeah. for apologetics. Yep. So sign up for that if you want to go deep. Man, we'll we'll help you out. Yeah, for sure. So, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Sorry if it's old or too late. Uh, no, hopefully, oh, hopefully it's not too late. But I got one more <laughs> thing, man. We're gonna wrap up this episode. Oh, What's up? Well, I I just wanted to give a special shout out to uh, the Brewster Community Church. Uh, They we approached the missions board and and we're in need of an an additional mic for our in studio guests, and they 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 stepped up, man. Yeah, totally. And again, we don't we don't take donations. We don't take we don't take any of that, right? Like everything that we've done. And there's monthly costs and all that that we have ongoing this whole time that we've been doing the podcast. Uh, we cover that. Mm-hmm. This is a joy, you know? And so I, we did decide to, to reach out to the church um, because we did need a little help. And, and I feel like, could we have figured it out? Yeah, I think we could have, but, but it was just, it was awesome of them to be so gracious and kind. Uh, and it's a blessing. So we're thankful. We don't have to, 
borrow mics and and yeah. you know for the guests and stuff like that we can have our own here in studio ready to rock and roll so good sound quality good yeah. mic oh, absolutely. All available yes. so we have have guests on um it's i don't know i i feel like people can hear that and be like well you don't need money or this or that you you kind of do though to make mm-hmm. stuff even happen to exist so well, the thing is is that there's so many things that we could do uh Better in terms of production and all that. I mean, I'm getting plastic surgery enough with the ugly jokes. (laughs) Gosh, Gosh, no, that's not what I meant. There are those things that that it would make it helpful, but again, that's not our aim at this point. So we're good. So, but yeah, so thank thank you very much, the Brewster community. Absolutely, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I I like. I I think it's cool, man. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna wrap up this uh, perfect episode yet again, brothers and sisters. (laughs) Please hit us up if you had any questions on. (laughs) Anything. The Bible. Yeah. All of the things. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. Um, also, I did have one out there. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Please um, message us. Let us know if you do know of someone who wants to come on, whether they be a continuist or a cessationist. And if you need that explained, hit us up again. Or we'll anyone for that matter. Yeah. Right? yeah if there's yeah, someone sure. that you would love to, you would think would be a benefit to other people, the listening audience. Yes, hit us Get up, man. There. We'd love to interview, or, or I feel I feel weird about saying interview because it's not an interview, man. Yeah, so far, we yeah, have it has not been an interview. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. So, all right, brothers and sisters, you know it's been a good, true discussion. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Just kidding. Go. I, just, I felt like it was. <laughs> We're gonna wrap this up. Until next time, God bless. God bless. Hey there, Joseph Dobbs here from True Discussion. And Chris Douglas. Look, we wanted to take a second and just say thanks for either watching or listening to our content. But mostly watching because it's YouTube. And we wanted to just ask that you would take a moment and leave us a, a thumbs up, that you would subscribe, and, and of course share. Yeah, because you like, like it people. And share it and yeah. subscribe. That's We want you to do all those things now. Sorry, but... But yeah, now. But yeah, what please. are you waiting on? But seriously. Seriously.